and welcome to Sports Hub. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Moden Sinkala. On tonight's program, I'm hosting women in coaching. They have played for their respective national teams before. So I'll introduce them shortly. And today we continue with the spirit of giving. And uh, we are giving replica jerseys. So they are up for grabs. Uh, all you have to do is answer a given question correctly. You can call uh, plus 211, plus 260211, 25 30 25, or plus 260211, 25 08 43. Or send a WhatsApp message to 0973. 433802 Remember, this is for WhatsApp only. So you can start with Sports Hub, then you put your message or you put your, your answer there. So those are the numbers to call. So for those responding via WhatsApp, I'll display a photo um, for a sports person for you to identify. And if you identify that person correctly, uh, yes, and that's the photo. Who is that player in, uh, on your screen? Who is that player? Are you able to identify him? Give me a call or you can uh, send a WhatsApp message and answer that question. It will be it's so interesting to hear from you. So jerseys are up for grabs. We have Napsa Stars jerseys. We have City of Osaka jerseys and uh, also Zanako jerseys. So uh, the lines will be displayed on the screen. Who is that sports person on your screen? He is a Zambian legend. So I'll be happy if you identify that person. All right. So before I introduce the guests in the studio, I have some results for you uh, coming from the weekend. Let's start with the National Volleyball League with seven results. On Saturday in the men's category, the games were held at OYDC Zambia Sports Development Center in Lusaka. It was Red Arrows Neo in Deni 3, Nkwazi 3, Nakonde Neo, Chalube 3, Unza 1, Green Buffaloes 3, Nakonde Neo, Prisons, Prison Leopards 1, Nkwazi 3, Chawama Neo, uh, Green Buffaloes 3, Unza 1, Green Eagles 3, Prison Leopards Neo in Deni 3. On Sunday, it was Green Buffaloes 3, Red Arrows Neo in the battle of um, the military people. Nkwazi 3, Green Eagles Neo, Unza 1, Prison Leopards 3, Chawama Neo, Nakonde 3. Yes, that's a... Uh, where I come from, I come from Isoka, but Isoka is near Nakonde. So Nakonde uh, beating Chawama by three points to nil. Nkwazi three, Chawama one. Uh, then another game played by Nkwazi, it was three, Green Eagles nil. Then Green Buffaloes three, Green Eagles one. Uh, Prison Leopards three, Red Arrows nil. Indeni three, Chalube two. So after these results, Nkwazi are back on top of the league. Uh, followed by Indeni. Then in the women's category, it was Unza 3, Red Arrows 2, Nkwazi 3, Green Buffaloes, Neo. On Sunday, it was Green Buffaloes 3, Unza 1, Prison Leopards 3, Nkwazi Neo, uh, Green Buffaloes 3, Red Arrows Neo. So after these games, Green Buffaloes are on top now. They've supplanted uh, prison leopards, but the uh, green buffaloes have played more games. So those are the standings in the uh, Zambia Volleyball Association uh, League. That's the national league, which has teams from all over. Right. Uh, from uh, volleyball, we go to basketball in the Midlands Basketball Association Week 12 results in the masculine league. Matero Magic 75, Bulldogs 42. Heroes Play United 56, Matero Warriors 75, Napsa Hurricane 72, Monali Sun 74. What a game it was. Napsa Hurricanes were the league leaders losing to Monali Suns. And uh, this was their second loss, Napsa Hurricanes. Uh, it was a shocker of a, a win. Uh, Monali Suns uh, uh, being coached by Sekuru. Then KSM Giants 91, Nishati Denver 50, Green Buffalo 74, LCC Looters 57, Unza Pesa 61, Hawks 53. In the feminine category, Unza Hannes 47, Green Buffalo 55, Napsa Breeze 52, Dolphins 57, City Falcons 24, Nishati Shells 47, Magic Sparks 39, Hot Spurs 45. So here is how they are standing 
on the table material magic uh, material magic are on top 23 points followed by green buffaloes 23 points napsa hurricanes have been relegated to the third position 22 points material warriors fourth position 19 points in the feminine category dolphins still on top 21 points green buffaloes also on 21 points in second position unza han is 19 points in third position and napsa breeze uh, fourth 18 points okay we now go to football uh, in the Kosafa Women's Championship, third and fourth playoffs, we saw Zambia facing South Africa. The game ended 1-0, but Zambia won on penalties by four goals to three. Uh, in the semi-final, Zambia cried after uh, losing to Tanzania. Also on post-match penalties, it was 1-0. Uh, first time Zambia conceding. Um, so Zambia finished uh, third. Uh, second bronze medal. Um, actually, the guest I have tonight um, was part of the team that won a bronze medal. Uh, the tournament was held here in Zambia in 2002. So, uh, one of the guests is here. I'll be introducing her shortly. Um, so, Zambia winning another bronze medal at Kosafa. In the final, it was Tanzania beating Malawi by a goal to nil. So, Tanzania have swept all tournament starting from under 17 under 20 and the senior uh, category that's in the women's um, uh, championship all right and then in the under 20 fifa world cup qualifiers um it was malawi one zambia two so zambia progressing to the next stage after winning eight one on aggregate so we expect more we hope um the under 20 will qualify for the world cup and uh, becoming the second team to qualify for the World Cup. Remember, the first team uh, went. Uh, the first team was the Under-17, which went to Costa Rica uh, for the World Cup. And again, uh, the Under-20 tournament will be held in Costa Rica. Who knows? Maybe they will qualify again. So uh, the coach I'm hosting today was also part of the Under-17 team. So interesting. Um, so those are the, were the results in the women's category. Then in the FIFA World Cup qualifiers for men, Zambia hosted Equatorial Guinea at National Heroes Stadium, and the result was 1-1. And that uh, shattered Zambia's dreams of reaching the World Cup, because what is remaining now is mathematical. Uh, Zambia has to pray that oh, Tunisia should lose all the games, because Tunisia are now on top with 10 points. Uh, followed by Equatorial Guinea, seven points. Zambia is on four points. So Zambia is remaining with two, po uh, two games to play. And if they win both games, uh, remember they have to host Mauritania here uh, on uh, November 11. Uh, uh, then uh, they travel to Tunisia on November 14. So is it possible for Zambia to win? And is it possible that uh, Tunisia will not gain even a point from the two games that are remaining? Uh, so it looks like Zambia has missed again to qualify for the World Cup. Since independence, Zambia has never qualified uh, for the World Cup. Right, so um, for now we take a musical break and we dance to a song done by 1J titled Tulali La Bola. I'm back on this one with masterminds from Malawi. And yes,
Kula tundi madolo dolo zikoli tika wapa mafolo folo Kani ya mpila jili be marile Tiku buisa paka wina pakile Tichita wino lendo mudalile Timu zambia wuna peno chitile That's one J saying to Larida Bola. So, whether we never wa Zambia and Gubaluse, Tavoka to Larida Fia Bola, no Kuria to Ria Bola, no Fuala to Fuala Bola. So, everything ni Bola. So, uh, so, the next time the team will be playing, will be there supporting. So, that's uh, one J there. So, time for me now to introduce my guest in the studio. And the first one is Kape Sairi. She played for the women national football team. Um, the very first time that Zambia won a bronze medal in 2002, and by the way, that was held in Harare. So she was part of that team when Zambia won that bronze uh, medal. The second bronze medal that Zambia won was in 2006. Uh, third one was 2017. And so this one that they won over the weekend was the fourth bronze medal at Kosafa. But the Chilishan, today a gold medal, number two, and I can have bronze. <laughs> All right, so we, oh, we also have Martha Kafupi. Uh, I think one of the longest serving players uh, uh, in the Zambia netball team, Martha Kafupi. So she's now coach for the under 20 women's team, which is preparing for the Zone 6 games. She did a lot for Mother Zambia in terms of uh, netball. So these are the two guests that we have. Ladies, thank you very much for coming. You can come and join me here thank so that you. we hear your stories where <laughs> you are coming from all right okay, let me start with uh, yeah let me start with you martha um uh your, your name martha kapup is not strange in netball circles <laughs> 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 by the way we have uh, a kafupi here at ZNBC in the transport section. His name is Love Well Kafupi. Are you related? No, no, no. Okay, so this is just another kafupi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you start netball? Well, I started my netball career in Nindola. That's where I, I was. That's where you were born from? Yeah. Okay. From, I started when I was um, 13. Wow. Yeah. That means that's from school? From school, primary school. Okay. Which school was that? Katondo Primary School in Dola. One of Kuba area. Okay. Yeah. All right. And 13, I think you, you should have been in grade 8 or so. Yeah. No, no, no. Mm. I was in grade 7 by oh. that time. Ah, okay. All right. How did you gain the interest? I just had like passion, love of the sport, netball. Did you have maybe your elder sisters who were playing netball, or maybe some neighbors who, uh, where you got the inspiration from? There was this neighbor who used to play from Dollar Line at that time. So I used to go at the place all the time to carry the bags. When, when, whenever they are going for the game, I used to follow them. Hmm. I'd like to know which year was that? Was it in the 90s? In the 90s, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in the 90s, yes. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll come back to you to hear how you, you had to break through to even play for the national team. Let's hear from Kape. How, 
how did you have the interest of playing uh, football when everyone else, most of the girls, wanted to play netball? Well, uh, for me, um, I, I grew up a tomboy. <laughs> because mm. I, I'm, be, I'm in between four brothers. I've got two older brothers and two younger brothers. So most of the time, I'd be playing football around the house, around the yard. So, um, but my interest was sparked really in around 1993, after the, uh, the Gabon disaster. Mm. Uh, around that time, that's when I heard that there was a girls' team being formed in Chilenje, where they've been born and bred. Um, and then my mom had um, had a position. By then, there was a lot, a lot more netball being played there. So my mom was in charge of the netball team. So we said, they said, let's form a football team. And by then, it was under the, um, the Norwegian um, Sports for All program. So when they formed that, that girls' football team, I was amongst the first girls in the, in the area to join. So my interest was really just self-made, maybe, if I can say it like that. Self-made? <laughs> yeah. So the first team you played for was, was a Chilenje-based side? It was a Chilenje-based side. We called it, uh, our programs were run in sectors. So I was with Chilenje sector. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we had about eight or ten sectors running at that time. So yeah, I was groomed by Chilenge, uh, the Chilenge community. What position did you start with? Initially, I started, uh, I was a wing back. I used to play number two, but I later on changed and I realized I was strong on the midfield, so I started playing as a defensive midfielder. Okay, <laughs> interesting story. And I know um, grounds are quite bad in, in Chilenje. Uh, how are you managing, maybe even doing sliding tackles? <laughs> 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 Especially as a defender, because you have to be a hard tackler. Um, honestly speaking, I was a very clean player. <laughs> I, never, I never really did a lot of tackling. Um, and then you're right on the pitch. I've had a few bruises to show for it. It was very bad. But mm. then because of the interest that we had, we just had to endure the pain that we, we, we got from the, 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 the bruises that we, we got from playing in that, in that kind of pitch that you played in. Okay. So uh, I'm sure you also started, you said you started from home and also played some chimpomba type of football. Always bruising my, my, my toes, yes, because we used to play barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point were you spotted to play like organized football? Um, organized football was developed around 1998 um, when they, they formed as uh, Lusaka Provincial Women's League. Uh, by then, a, a few teams had come on board. Um, we had, uh, the sectors had been broken up, and then communities had uh, taken, had, had made, some other communities had, had come on board and, uh, and created um, teams. So we started playing competitively between 1997 and 1998. And I'm proud to say that my mom was the general secretary of the Lusaka Province um, uh, so, uh, Women's League, which, which ran from around 1998 to somewhere around 2000 to 2002 somewhere. Okay. So somehow your mom also played an instrumental role in making sure that you continued with that football career? She did play an instrumental role, though at first she was so much against me playing football. Because I'd, mm. I'd go to the pitch, I'd come back from school in my school uniform and go straight to play football, the beating I'd get. <laughs> but after she noticed that I wasn't giving up, I was resilient in what I wanted to do, she gave up and then just started supporting me along the way. Okay. Uh, which coach noticed you that actually you can, you can play for the national team? Um, there were a couple of coaches that I can, I can name uh, for starters. My, my, my childhood coach, Mr. Evans Kalenga, who also happened to be a FIFA referee at some point. Oh, Everson yeah. Kalenga, yes. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, my club He's coach. also into boxing circles. He, he was, yes, I'd also become a boxing uh, secretary at some point. Okay. So he was my club coach. Then um, for me to break into the national team, we had um, Mr. Emmanuel Matenga. We called him Rasta. He died a while back. And then we also had Mr. Chombo, uh, Kenan Chombo. And uh, we had coach uh, Silwimba Silu Silu from Changa, Kongola, I think. Uh, we had trials for the national team, and um, fortunately, I was amongst those who were picked to represent Zambia at that time. Okay, so um, yeah, I know that's you there. Um, can you remember that photo? Clearly, yes. Uh, that's last year at the Barcelona Academy. We were preparing to play South Africa in a World Cup qualifier. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm jumping the gun because I'm, I'm interested to know. Um, how it was because um, that was the first Kosafa ever that was held 
and you went there and came back with a bronze. How, how was the experience that time? Um, like for starters, we, the, the people never really had a lot of faith in us that time. So even as we were leaving, there wasn't that much confidence amongst even people who were leading us. We said we're just going there just to go and you know, make an appearance. But it was a great experience because people expected us to lose by insane margins and whatnot. But we actually did very well. The only game we lost was in the semi-final against South Africa. Mm, so South Africa has been a thorn. It's <laughs> been a thorn. <laughs> <laughs> and you always meet at semi-final level. Exactly. Mm. So we lost that game because I remember we beat Malawi by, was it eight goals to nil? Then we beat, uh, we beat Mozambique in the third and fourth. Uh, we beat them by a goal to nil. And I think we also beat, uh, was it Lesotho by 13 goals or something? So the only loss recorded in the tournament was the, the, the semi-final to SA. But the experience in itself was overwhelming. It was, it was a great outing because this was the first national team in Zambia. And um, for us to have reached that, uh, that, that, uh, those levels, it was, um, it was a great experience for us. Were you playing as a midfielder then? Yes. Okay. And uh, which are some of the players you can remember that you played uh, with at that time? Obviously, the first one I'm going to name is the, the late Martha Mtale, because she played, she played a major role. Martha would push me. You know, she used to play, we, we used to play almost the same number. <laughs> so mm. she would always say, I'm going to quote her in Bemba. She would mm. always say, But you know, she would always say, I'm going to quote her in Bemba. She would always say, She would always say, She would always push me like that. Like every time I would slug, she would say, Uh-uh, she would picking her. So I played alongside Martha. Um, yeah, she died two years ago. Um, I played alongside um, Lizzie Mzungu. She's now uh, based in Norway. I played against um, uh, um, alongside uh, Audrey Fonganyambe, who was one of our best uh, strikers. Then um, Red Arrows women coach currently uh, Edna Sha was also a, a member of that team. And then um, there's a couple more that we played with. Although it's not everyone that's still involved in football right now. All right, let me get back to Martha Kafupi now. <laughs> okay, so uh, playing a netball at school that time in grade seven, and I remember that time, if you are a very good player, I'm told, you know, the <laughs> I don't know whether it's true, whether it's the pupils who are not paying much attention to studies, they would stay longer in grade seven. Yeah, because they were... <laughs> we, we actually used to learn from school. Mm. Yes. Just to play netball. Mm, you get your cap bag, you go, you learn away. You <laughs> play, you play, go back. Then, by the time you are having the test, uh, <laughs> we are failing all the time. <laughs> so for, for how many years were you in grade 7? About three. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> three years. Very fitting. <laughs> so it's not that, uh, no, the, the rumors that, no, I'm a teacher as well, I'm a pupil, so that, I'm a teacher as well. No, that time, I'm a teacher as well. No, I'm a teacher as well. I'm a teacher as have that heart for school, only for netball. Okay. <laughs> so, um, how did, it, were your parents encouraging you to, to be playing netball? No, no, no. They were against netball. Hmm. Um, but I, I remember by the time I, I passed my grade uh, 7 to grade 8, mm. I was supposed to go to Ndola Dominican Convent. Mm. Then I went, I only attended school for a month. I then I was upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I know. I go back mm. until I came here in Lusaka. So when you ran away, where did you go? I went to some place where the the netballers for Ndola Lime used to stay. Okay. So by then you had joined the club? Yes, I had to join when I was young. Mm -hmm. You joined Ndola Lime? Ndola Lime, yes. Okay. Then I started go, going there, playing Nijibo, just carrying the, the bags, watch, doing some chores with for those, the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Until I joined the... Uh, Chiranga Cement. I played Chiranga Cement. I was being coached by Mike, my Mike Sinfopo. That's the coach who, who took me from there to Napsa. Mm. Okay. I joined Napsa when I was like uh, 15 years. When you were 15 years yes. old? Mm. Ah, okay. 
uh, interesting story. <laughs> uh, let me get to Kape. I'll get back to you um, uh, later on so that you finish that juicy story. Kape, did you experience such whereby you, since your parents were also against you playing, uh, playing football, did you at some point run away or maybe do something that your parents didn't want you to do? No, 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 no. Um, fortunately for them, I was a disciplined child. So I would just should I would just get scolded, but still do the same thing the following day. Mm. So I I I I kind of just said, mm. I'm going I'm going to play football. I will just come and you know get the brunt of my mom's wrath when when I'm done. <laughs> so running away from home was never really something that crossed my mind because I was I was like very young when I just started. I was 10, 11, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, when you came back from uh, Zimbabwe, um, how was the reception when you came back home? At that time, did people love women's football? At that time, more than um, people would, would look at us with a lot of scorn. It wasn't everybody who appreciated the talent that we, we had because we had people who'd say, "Touch and thou." So it's a bit foolish and a bit foolish, you know. So um, even if I remember correctly. Um, did we get a proper reception? I, I highly doubt. Because mm. we had gone to Zimbabwe by bus. We had gone with the, with the Rosa bus, with the, the first one. And then when we got back home, I think we just got to the, to the, to the lodge, grabbed our bags, and everybody had to go home. So unless my memory, my memory is failing me, but I don't remember <laughs> being like, um, welcomed properly, if I can put it like that. OK. All right. Um, Martha, at what point did now your parents say, okay, uh, Martha, to amon at okay, umutimawa bakunet bonomba, okay, I could tell you no. When I joined the NAPSA in uh, nineteen ninety nine. Mm. Yes. Way well, that's way well back. Yes. And when and at that time they were like picking the under twenty. Netball. We hosted the under 20, I think, by that time at Nasdaq. Mm. Yes, they picked me in that team. It's when they saw me. Can you yes. remember that photo? <laughs> yes, yes. Which, which occasion was that? It was for the under 20. That was in 1999? 1999, 1999, 1998. Mm. It's when they saw me in that team. That's when they allowed me <laughs> to be where I am. <laughs> How old were you in 1999? I was uh, 16. 16? Yes. Okay, so you can make your own calculation, 16 plus from 1999 up, up to, to now. now. <laughs> <laughs> you make your own calculations yes. how old uh, Martha is. Mm. Okay, so that was the beginning of your journey to, to play for the national team. Yes. When we won that, the, the, the same event, they picked about uh, five of us. We joined the, the senior team. That was me, Diana Banda, Eba Stole, and uh, there's uh, this girl who used to live in Kitwe. Mm. I don't know where she is right now. We joined the senior team. OK. Yes. What trophy is that? I can see a trophy. It was Kosana. That one? Yes, That's Kosana. Kosana. Uh, under 20. That's still again in 1999. Nine, yes. Wow, a lot of achievements in 1999. Huh? Yes. Uh, wow. And Diana Banda is still playing. Yes, she's still playing. But you've retired. Yes. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you retire so early when? Me, you know? I had so many injuries. Mm. Yes, my knees. They can't allow me to. To play. I see. So I thought, let me jump to another. Okay. <laughs> this is when I've, I've jumped to be a coach this year. It's when I started my coaching career. This year? Yes. Okay, but which year did you retire? Last year. Oh, you, you only retired last yeah, year? last year, yes. Uh, okay, while well, playing for uh, Lusaka, Lusaka City, City Council. Council. So you said at some point you joined NAPSA. For how long did you play for NAPSA? From 90... Up to 2000, 2000 something. I used to work for NAPSA huh? mm. right then. Then they retrenched us. Then I stopped. I joined the 
Redaros. From Redaros, I moved to Osaka City Council. From Osaka City Council, I went to Zambia. Mm. Yes. You are really a traveler. Mm, I, <laughs> 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 so after that, in 20... Because I've been uh, with Osaka City Council for about eight years. Eight years? Eight to, yes, eight years. Which team is that one? That one is National Airport. Mm, you also played for National Airport? Yes. And this looks like it's way back. You look a bit younger. Yes, there's me there. There's Ibon Kaholo. There's Marwa, the assistant coach mm. to the national team mm. for the senior. Mm. Then there's uh, Mary Pili. And the other one was Mary. We used to call her Mary Baby. Mm. Yes. So all these are retired? Yes, there. <laughs> There's only one there who's still <coughs> active. Mm. The, the Yvonne Kaholo she's talking about also happened to me, my goalkeeper at the yeah. national team. She also played football? Yes. yes. Oh! <laughs> wow, I played connection. football at one time. Myself. You also played football? Yeah. I uh, used to play number five. When you were at school? No, at Napsa. Oh! Wow! <laughs> so you're able to play football, netball, what else? Basketball. Does? Basketball? And uh, darts, mm. then table tennis. Yes. So you are just like um, Mono, Carol Mono. Carol Last Mono, time yes. I hosted Carol Mono here, she's able to play basketball, volleyball, football. and netball. Even football, right? Mm, she can. Okay, but your heart has been with netball. Netball, yes. Okay. I really, really love netball. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what, um, what about that photo? That photo is Saka City Council. Mm. Mm, we were in Namibia. Okay. What occasion was it? That was a tournament for the municipality. Oh, for council. For councils, yes. Okay. We were uh, invited there. I'm trying to check where you are. Uh, uh, somewhere at the, at the far end, is it? Third. Third from, from the right. From the right, I'm third. Oh, third from the right. Okay. Wow, Martha Kafupi, quite um, uh, a traveled player. Uh, yes. What are some of the achievements you achieved with the national team? Anyway, I've achieved so, I've achieved so many things. Mm. We traveled to, I remember we traveled to South Africa. We went for the Kosana tournament there in Botswana. Osana tournament. Uh, Did you win? We came third. Third, okay. Uh, and uh, all Africa games in Mozamb Mozambique. That was my last uh, what in the tournament in the national team. That was in 2011. Yes. And Mozambique, and you won a bronze medal. Yes, yes. That was yes. quite an achievement. Yes. Yeah, I remember some of the players who went there. Dana Banda was there, Dana right? Dana Banda, Mutafela. Mutafela, yes, she, she was the oldest player I remember at one of the tournaments in Australia, in right? Australia, she, when she was 45, 40 or 45? 45. 45. 45. All right. What about that photo? That one, OIDC. There was a tournament at the OIDC. This is Osaka City Council. Okay. Team. All right. And so uh, it looks like you've settled at Lusaka City Council because now you're also a coach. You're an assistant coach? Yes. Assistant coach at Lusaka, Lusaka City, City Council. Council, yes. Okay. All right. And there, that's LCC again. LCC. All right. What position have you been playing mostly? GA, go shooter, WA, and center. Okay. But the one I enjoy most. What? W, w A. A. It's nice. Wing attack. Wing attack. When you are, when I had that, that the bib for wing attack, ah, I tell you, I enjoyed it. Yeah, lady, I'm a team. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> okay. Now, check off a twang graph, a twang graph zone. Diana Banda, me, Regina Mchimba, there's Patricia Mwanza. Ah, we used to perform. Okay. 
which tournament would you say is your most memorable one as a national team player? The first World Cup in New Zealand. Mm. How was your performance there? It was fine, fantastic. It was fantastic. You finished, was it 15th? 15th, yes. But out of 16 teams? Yeah, no, 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 not out of 15. There were like four, four groups, A and B, then C and D. Then us, we were in group D. We, we played against the group C, but we came second there. Okay. Let me come to Kape. So Kape, you played the first Kosafa in 2002. Um, yeah. The other Kosafa, which was held here in Zambia, you didn't play. What happened? In 2006, uh, four years after, you, you won bronze. Four years after winning bronze. I, by 2006, I was working as a, as a, sports, as a PE teacher in, in South Africa. I was, uh, I was with Sports Coaches Outreach by then, and um, I was working somewhere in Kimberley in the Northern Cape. So I was in South Africa for a year and a half. So okay. I only came back home in December of 2007, around that time. So that's why I missed the 2006 tournament. And by then I'd actually retired because I'd suffered a back injury, which, which, which uh, made me stop playing. Okay, I wanted to say, how do you retire at a young age? <laughs> no, I suffered a, b a bad injury in my back. So Out I, of I playing football? Not really playing football. I was, um, at the time I was working as a teacher, I was doing all sorts of sports. So the time I got injured, I was playing basketball. Okay. So I hurt myself and I just couldn't run anymore. I'm sure that, uh, that was devastating for you to retire at a young age. Very, very devastating, especially that, um, let me mention that I had my first child in 2004. And uh, just after giving birth a year later, I mean, I think I was only about seven months old when I left, I left him home and went to play football in Malawi. <laughs> so I had, I, had, I had that heart of wanting to continue playing. But then this injury just took me out completely. Okay. So your most memorable experience at national team was 2002 as a player? As a player, the, the, the highlight of my career was in 2002. Because that's the, that's, I think that was the second last time I, I played for the national team. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, so at that time, in 2002, were you one among the youngest, youngest players? Or, uh, how old were you by then? 2002, I must have been... 16, 17, I think. Okay, so you were a teenage player. <laughs> I, was, I think I was, I was among uh, the youngest in the team. Okay. Because we had Martha, the oldest, who was already in her 30s, I think, by then. Was it early? She was, she's in late 20s or early 30s. And I think I was the youngest. Myself and um, Mumbam Chindo, I think we were, we were amongst the youngest players in that team. Okay. So you, wow, well, uh, can you remember that photo? Yes. <laughs> Actually, on this day, I was at uh, Levi Manawasa Stadium. I think Zambia was playing, um, was it Lesotho or Sudan? I think so. Right. So your, your profession, you are a teacher by profession? No, not really. I'm, I'm a sports trainer, <laughs> if I can put it like that. I, I, I do physical education. OK. Yes. All right. And you, Martha, what's your profession? I'm a sports, uh, my, my profession, I'm a sports, uh, uh, like what do you do at Lusaka City at Council? At Lusaka City Council, I'm working as a officer assistant. Yes. Okay, all right. I'm with the uh, finance department. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, uh, earlier I saw some certificates, Kape. Would you remember what that was all about? Yes, um, that was 20, 2014, after doing our, our CAF C uh, courses. Mm. That's Coach Beauty there on my right, and that's Coach Florence uh, on my left. So this was after we got our CAF C uh, licenses. So these are the powerful women we have in football. Um, they've all coached the, the national team at some point. Um, so you have a CAF C license? A CAF B. CAF B. Yes. All right. So at what point did you gain interest in becoming a coach? I think my, my, my stunt in essay as a PE teacher made me want to, to go into coaching. Because uh, prior to me going to essay, I'd done a couple of uh, coaching courses back home. 
like uh, for example the first coaching course I attended was um, 2003 uh, it was um, under the KNVB in conjunction with the uh, Kalusha Walia Foundation and um, National O oh, and uh, Nana's deck so we had um, an instructor from Kenya who came to talk to us and then two years later in 2005 I attended the sports for children um, course with uh, athletes in action from Canada so those courses sparked my interest and um, the, prof the, the, the most professional that I would refer to would be the one I attended in 2008 and the following year when I, I traveled to the Netherlands for a, a more advanced course. Right, okay. So for now, we take another break. When we come back, we continue with our conversation with the two guests that I have in the studio. Mingala, 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 mingala tu. Yeah! Ati mingala, 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 mingala tu. Yeah! Wa Zambia ni jiporo poro mare. Jiporo poro. Wa Zambia ni jiporo poro mare. Ni jiporo poro. Bisha, bisha, bisha. Ona kaya ko. Ati muko ni amora. Ati wa Zambia. Ati muko ni amora. Ona kaya ko. Oh, uh -huh. 
That's Ona Kayako by MC Wabuino, the elephant of Zambian music. Right, so we are now here outside. When you see us here, just know that it's time for challenges. So we'll see who will win either in ball juggling or arm wrestling between <laughs> these two. One is a footballer, another one is a netballer. We'll see who is the strongest. Uh, but before we do that, um, Kape, I uh, know you came into coaching and you've coached both the, I mean, all the, the, the national teams, under 17, under 20, and senior team. How has been your experience? It's been smooth sailing. <laughs> it's been great. Um, the first uh, national team I ever coached was the under 20 in 2009. Uh, we played South Africa that time, and again, of course, they knocked us out in the first round. Then I was moved to the. I I I, I stopped. Not stopped per se. I was. Um, I went away, and then I was appointed under 17 assistant coach in uh, 2012, and. Um, we played uh, preparatory matches for the Zone 6. We went to Azerbaijan. Uh, we won the Zone 6 um, tournament that year. And then the following year with a new team, we qualified the team to the Under-17 Costa Rica World Cup. Then after the Costa Rica World Cup, I was elevated. Uh, I moved How's together. the experience in Costa Rica? I know the players that are playing in the senior team now are the ones who were there in Costa Rica. Costa Rica was wonderful. It's unfortunate we didn't um, go far. Uh, circumstances, but it was it was a wonderful experience. Um, we learnt a lot, and um, I think that the girls the girls became stronger after that experience because mentally, I, I think they, they became better better players after experiencing playing at that big stage. So it's no wonder that you see them doing well around this time, if I can say that. Okay, after twenty fourteen. After 2014, I was uh, moved uh, to, the, to the senior team. I was working with coach Albert Kachinga by then, who, by the way, is um, I owe my gratitude to him because he has shaped me into who I am today. Mm, I wow. enjoyed working a lot with him because he always made sure that I was doing things, like doing the right way. He always, always pushed me to always uh, do the right thing. So in coach Albert and I were moved to the senior team. Um, it was 2016. Um, 17, I, I, was, I took a break. Mm -hmm. Then 18, I was back on the national team, the senior team, and we qualified the team to the Africa Cup. And then I was uh, brought back to the under-20 the following year, and we won the uh, silver medal in the Kosafa, the, the inaugural under-20 Kosafa that year. All right. Great. Um, quite an illustrious uh, <laughs> career. Uh, Martha, uh, when you came into coaching, how has it been for you? Uh, well, it has been great, because this is my first year to be appointed, in my first year to be a coach. They appointed me this year as a Osaka City Council assistant coach, and my first achievement, they even appointed me under 20 nation team coach. Ah, incredible, assistant coach. Yes, assistant coach. Okay, that's good. But I want to ask <laughs> you coaches, um, for instance, when a team loses, especially you, Kape, since you've been uh, there for some time, when a team loses, is it a coach to blame or the players? <laughs> <laughs> More than that, a loaded question. <laughs> That's a loaded one. I think, um, I think blaming anybody would be very unfair. I mean, f football has got three different results. You either win, you lose, or you draw. Mm -hmm. So blaming the coach, blaming the players, there may be instances where you can blame the coach. They yeah, didn't make the right substitutions, yeah. they didn't do what, mm. then the coach would take blame. But if it's a other, anyway, players also mess up at times. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's a very loaded question. Okay, man. time for challenges. What do you want to start with? What juggling or arm wrestling? Let's juggle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So the floor is yours. I'll be counting up to three, then you start. Wait, let me warn you. I'm, I'm still injured. I uh, Which one is your best food? I do both, but okay. <laughs> the stronger one is my right, which is injured. I, I'm sure I can be a peso Okay, <laughs> time starts now. Okay. Um, mm. So, So yes. Do I need to do that or just. You can it lift it if you yeah. want. Mm. It will be easier. My shoes yes. are. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. All right, Martha. Are there you, you are. You know. Yes, you are not. <laughs> yes, you are not I'm but just trying. Yes, yes. Let's see how many you can do. One, two. <laughs> okay. Maybe who knows, Martha? Who <laughs> tries uh, arm wrestling? Maybe you might win. Who knows? 
you you are all physically <laughs> fit, right? <laughs> so time starts now. When I count up to three, when I say go, are we doing then it you here? go. Yes, like that. So make sure you hold it so that you support it. <laughs> that it doesn't. Fall. Yes. When I say go, you go. No. Ho, um, yeah, you, you rest your elbows. Yes, oh, just like that. She's already stronger than so, me. So, <laughs> one, two, three, go. Is it a footballer or is it a netballer? Who is the strongest? Or is Kape going to use her height <laughs> advantage? Oh, Kape wins both. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which one do you want to try? Both juggling or mostly? Both juggling. <laughs> there you are. Hmm? One, two, three. Ah. <laughs> okay, no, well done. Well thank done, Kase. <laughs> well done, thank you for coming. So this is the program for today. I was hosting Martha, uh, Martha Kafupi, who's been a netball player, playing for the national team, and now a coach for the under 20, and now uh, LCC uh, assistant coach. Also, Kape Saidi, who is, uh, who's played for the national team, and also the assistant uh, coach at uh, senior team under 20 and also under 17. We end here. My name is Modern Sinkar. Until next week, at the same time, goodbye.